So let's get started. I wanted to introduce myself one more time. My name is Layla Lugendon, and I'm the health education manager here at the International Foundation for Autoimmune and Autoinflammatory Arthritis, AI Arthritis for short. And this is our monthly community chats that we have with our community every month on the 15th of the month. Um, I apologize for those of you who might have been planning on attending um, the last community chat. Unfortunately, I was not feeling well um, and I had to cancel. And so um, again, I apologize for anybody who was planning on coming to that one. I hope that you enjoyed this one and that you can also check out our other community chats at aiarthritis.org slash chat. You'll be able to find all the previous community chats down there and basically see all of the different topics that we've talked about before. And the topic for this month is seeing a nurse practitioner instead of a physician. And let's discuss. I just wanted to let you all know up front that I do have a Google form that I created in order to be able to get some feedback from those who might be listening to this afterwards, after the chat has concluded, and wanted to contribute their thoughts, opinions, comments, anything like that. And so I will put that link down here in the chat also so that we can um, have anybody who would like to uh, give their opinion that they can um, go on that uh, Google form and let us know anything that you might um, have any comments about. Um, or you can also just comment on the Facebook page. If you are watching it here on Facebook, it will be playing back then also. And I'm putting that here in the chat, the Google form, um, so that you can all, like I said, add your opinions, your thoughts, your comments there. We also are planning on making a AI Arthritis three, Voices 360 talk show episode about this topic too. You can look forward to that. And that's why we're also looking for more opinions and comments about this topic. And every community chat, we also talk about why we have these community chats. We want to really be able to communicate with those in our community that may have very specific opinions on certain topics that are going on in our community. We want to talk about anything that the patients are, are interested about and want to know more about. So if you ever come across something that you think would be a great community chat topic, you can always email me at Layla at AIarthritis.org and you will be able to let me know what different topics you think that we should talk about. As a patient organization who mostly, we mostly are patients, we don't just represent the patient voice, we are the patient voice. And even though we are patients, we don't know everything that's going on in the community. So if you can think of a hot topic or anything that you think should be discussed, please let us know. And yeah. So again, we are putting this topic on the table for the first time. It was very timely because Michael and I had just attended the Rheumatology Nurses Society annual conference a week and a half ago, and we got to get to know a lot of the nurses and nurse practitioners that a lot of you may be seeing here in the United States. And I think that getting to talk to them and getting to be around them for a few days, I definitely get a gist of how they are as a profession and how awesome and amazing our rheumatology nurses are. So I just wanted to give them a shout out. The Rheumatology Nurses Society is also someone who supports our, or also a group that supports our organization and that we partner with pretty often. So I just wanted to say thank you again to all of the leadership at the Rheumatology Nurses Society. And um, actually there, I was able to connect with a few different NPs and talk to them about this topic. So there will be some points that I was able to get from the nurse practitioners from there. Unfortunately, it was a very small time frame between the end of that conference and this community chat. So we weren't able to plan for them to be on this chat, but I was able to get um, some points and opinions from a nurse practitioner that I met there at 
uh, the conference. And so I'm excited to share that with you also. Um, first, before we go into any discussions that patients have had or any um, opinions that nurse practitioners may have, I wanted to um, basically define the nurse practitioner and physician's assistant's role in rheumatology and uh, kind of just get a background on this. So I am actually going to share my screen because I feel like this is pretty important. Alrighty, so advanced practice providers are is what a nurse practitioner and a physician's assistant um, are collectively called. Um, I am not completely sure if it's just in the rheumatology field or if it's um, that overall, but um, they are called advanced practice providers. And um, it says they demonstrate a high level of independence and clinical expertise in the management of rheumatic diseases using advanced clinical skills, diagnostic reasoning, and therapeutic interventions. APPs integrate education, research, management, leadership, and collaboration with other healthcare professionals into their clinical roles to maximize a patient's health. And what are advanced, advanced practice providers able to do? They're able to take health histories, perform physical examinations, order and interpret diagnostic tests, make diagnoses, develop a course of treatment in collaboration with other healthcare professionals, prescribe medications and other treatments, including occupational and physical therapy in accordance with state laws, perform interventions such as aspiration and injection of joints, may be involved in research and program planning, educate patients and families about disease management and treatment, including medication administration, and serve as an advocate for patients and families within the healthcare facility, community, and regarding ongoing legislation. Where does the advanced practice provider work? Hospitals, clinics, home health, rehabilitation units, long-term care facilities. What kind of training does an advanced practice provider have. Most APPs complete graduate level programs leading to a master's degree. Education includes didactic courses and supervised clinical practice. APPs maintain state licensure and certified and are certified through national organizations, including the requirement for continuing medical education. So we have to keep in mind that we are an international foundation. Nurse practitioners and PAs and physician's assistants may have different roles in different parts of the world. Since this is from ACR, the American College of Rheumatology, we will this is mainly for the U.S. And even in the U.S., there's differences among states of, like they said, about the, the licensure and the level of the level of graduate programs that they have to that they have to complete and even how much they are even able to do within the clinic. Here, it seems pretty all-encompassing that um, physicians, assistants, and nurse practitioners can do pretty much the same thing as a physician, but state by state, there will be limitations on certain things that they can do. Yeah, I just wanted to give that background and let everybody know that. Let me see if we have anybody else joining in here. All righty. Let's move on to the next section. Okay, and a few um, reasons why we wanted to talk about this is that there are more and more patients in our community seeing advanced practice practitioners instead of physicians. And some patients are concerned that these um, practitioners are not as qualified as seeing a physician and quite frankly may be scared or turned off um, by seeing a nurse practitioner or a physician's assistant instead of a rheumatologist. And we believe that education on advanced practice practitioners and their skill level and what they're able to do will help to calm the nerves of these patients and help them to see that this could be a good thing overall or help them make a more educated opinion on this situation or if not change their opinion, at least educate them on what these practitioners are and aren't able to do and how their training is different than um, a physician. Alrighty, so basically last or yesterday, I brought this conversation to our volunteers. So shout out to all of our volunteers that 
participated in that conversation and even the ones that didn't participate in that conversation our volunteers are very active and involved in our organization and are an essential part to our organization so i really want to make sure that we give them a big round of applause and make sure that they know that they are um, valued and appreciated in our organization. Tracy is one of them. If you're still here, Tracy, thank you for being an amazing volunteer. And we appreciate you and all of the other volunteers for all that you help to contribute to our work. And so I had a conversation with the volunteers, basically asking them a very open-ended question. How do you feel about seeing a nurse practitioner versus seeing a physician. And I pulled out a few um, comments. I um, am going to leave the volunteers as anonymous and summarize what they said, um, but I wanna bring up a few topics. So one of the volunteers said, I have not seen an actual rheumatologist in a few years. He retired and I ended up continuing care with his physician's assistant and they take very good care of me. Since our move was four hours away, she's able to see the physician's assistant virtually twice a year. And so this is a, one of the more successful stories that we've heard in which someone is very open to seeing a physician's assistant versus a physician. And I think that's very important to see that she has been, even for a few years, has been seeing a physician's assistant and has continued doing great under her condition. And yeah, so that's one of the success stories that we've seen. I do have another one that says, I may have a unique experience that both of my NPs are also living with AI arthritis diseases. So they definitely understand from a patient perspective. She says that they also tend to listen more and not be as rushed as MDs. It's actually a fact that nurse practitioners do have more time with a patient allotted um, compared to an MD. So they, it seems like they have a lot more time to talk to you because they do. And with that being said, she said she still really loves her rheumatologist, and, but she does not mind seeing a nurse practitioner otherwise. We did have a few other volunteers also state that they've had horrible experiences with seeing an NP or a PA and them feeling like they didn't know what they were doing, that they didn't get briefed on their, on their case, and they just felt they're starting all over with a new, basically as if they were going to an, a whole new office and had to restart everything and instead of continuing on the, on the path that they were with the um, MD, which is one of the biggest things that I think with NPs and physician's assistants is them still being able to consult with the physician if ever need be. I think that's the biggest thing in working as a team. I've seen that, I know other patients have also stated that they think that if they are in a stable, a stable uh, condition within their disease, that they don't mind seeing an NP for follow-ups or a physician's assistant for follow-ups. But when their disease is very active and there's new interventions being started, new treatments being started and things like that, that they would feel more comfortable talking to a physician rather than an advanced practice practitioner. I'm coming in here just to double check to see if we have any questions or anything like that in the chat. Okay, I am going to continue on with a few more statements from our volunteers. One of them says, I've never seen an NP for rheumatology, but I prefer a nurse practitioner for dermatology and for an allergist. They seem to be more available and they also are staying up to date with a lot of the studies that they're in. And they feel as if, again, they spend more time during the appointment on, on education and support. And... Let's see, what else do we have here? Oh, I have two or three from international volunteers to give us an insight of their part in the world of how advanced practitioners, advanced practice practitioners play a part in their health system. So we have a volunteer from India and said that in India, NPs are not a thing. And I don't think they will be in the coming future. 
finding a rheumatologist is complicated and most of the hospitals do not separate that section. One generally tends to oscillate between orthopedics and immunology to find someone who has experience with rheumatology. So that's definitely saying something that in India, they don't have even dedicated rheumatologists. So it just goes to show that there's a lot of parts in the world that this field is still so very brand new and there's not a lot of expertise. And we really do need to just bring awareness to all of these diseases and how common they are. Like, can you imagine if so, how many people have AI arthritis diseases in the US and how many there must be in India and they just might not know it or they haven't found the right doctor to be able to diagnose them. Very frustrating. And in this case, I think that India could possibly benefit from having nurse practitioners in the field, but I think they would first have to have specific doctors for rheumatology in order to be able to build out that sector. It's, it's really tough. We have a volunteer from Australia and says that she said she often sees a nurse practitioner and they they do all the normal things like get the blood pressure and weight and discuss any worries. Nurse practitioner can also access all of the records and see what might need to be discussed. And she said that she's definitely seen a nurse practitioner or acting rheumatologist, and they can treat, they are able to treat her the same way that an actual rheumatologist would. And definitely, she said that she is able to see both, but sees her rheumatologist more still off, still more often. <clears throat> Lastly, we have a volunteer from Canada. She says, I could be missing something, but in Canada, going directly to an NP isn't even really an option. Most nurses in general play more of a supportive role in clinics slash hospitals, to my knowledge. I've only really had the option of going to a rheumatologist directly. I had an awful one in the large Toronto Network Hospital, but a great one now in the hospital close to my suburb, just outside my city. And I've learned a lot more about Canada's health system and how hard it is to get into a doctor. I think, again, Canada maybe could benefit from the nurse practitioner role to get more patients into the clinics faster. I think that I've heard that it, even in the United States, it takes about six to nine months to get an appointment. And that's happened to me before where I've had to wait three or four months before seeing a rheumatologist. Ideally, I think if rheumatologists see patients initially to get diagnoses and get them on a treatment plan, and once they are stable, that they can be handed off to the NP to be able to get more education, find other therapies that might complement the treatment that they're on, and follow up with them as they're stable while reviewing their labs and things like that. I think ideally that would be the best situation that nurse practitioners can take over the care completely once a patient is stable and in good working condition. But I also see the arguments for that NPs and physician's assistants can be more completely independent entities in providing care for these patients too, because in other parts of the world where there are, is an extreme shortage of rheumatologists, if they're are more people who are willing to get into the field that are nurses and become nurse practitioners or that become physician's assistants, then either way, it would still be better than not seeing a doctor at all. So there's that side to this argument too, where it's more of in necessity. I, my fiance's cousin is in med school and she told me that um, in their program, they only spend about one to two weeks on rheumatology. And for a three, four year program or however long it is that they are in med school, I think that's crazy that they only spend two weeks on rheumatology. How can you pick a specialty if you don't know much about it? And it's also been seen that people really only get into rheumatology when they're in med school because of a, either a personal experience or just something about it really resonates with them. Um, unfortunately, rheumatologists are one of the lowest paid specialists. And so that also is 
a factor in deciding um, on which uh, specialty to go into. A lot of people spend so much time and money in med school and um, may not want to get into a field where they're not making a lot of money, um, which is unfortunate because sometimes I feel like rheumatology patients are the ones that need the most help and that need the most sharp minds to be able to identify and diagnose all these patients with very individual disease presentations. And yeah, that's just a little bit extra on we all were saying, but I do think that it is important to think about that, of course, when at all possible, if you can see the person who is seen as the, the specialist, the head person in charge, that may feel to you like it's more credible, it's more valuable. But I think if you take a chance and see how a, a nurse practitioner or physician's assistant handles your care in the future and give them a chance, you may see the difference in the care and may even like it a little bit more. And that would also free up some appointments for those who are having active flares, who are in the middle of a crisis, who need an emergent appointment and things like that. Alrighty. I think that I read all of the comments that I had from our volunteers. Let me do a double check in the chat again, to see if there's anything else. Deanne said, I haven't seen one from rheumatology, but I do see an NP for other things and I adore her. I don't remember what the doctor looks like anymore. She's been so helpful. Absolutely. Any, any personal testimonies that you might have, any advice that you might have for those who are nervous about seeing a nurse practitioner, again, please go to the form that I posted in the comments that has to do with giving your opinions about this topic. And I wanted to move on to sharing a few more articles with you all. Let's get that started. Okay, so this article, Nurses Fill in Gaps in Rheumatology Practices, German study finds no differences in treatment effectiveness compared to care by doctors. Um, so I'm just going to highlight a few things in here. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Give me one second. <laughs> Nurses trained in rheumatology who took over many of the tasks involved in patient clinic visits typically performed by physicians did not impair effectiveness of therapy, but did appear to reduce waiting times to see a specialist, reported researchers in Germany. And so it goes into the place that they did the study and that the, the person who created the study presented this at a ULAR virtual meeting. Findings may allow Germany to join the ranks of other European nations, such as Denmark and the Netherlands and the UK, in allowing nurses to handle most of the heavy lifting in rheumatology office visits. So that's very great to note, is that those nations, Denmark, Netherlands, and the UK, do allow more of the heavy lifting in nurses in the offices. And um, what we saw is that our intervention does not undermine the current standard of care. In fact, it is really safe to say that for the first time in Germany, we could show that the nurse consultation is very safe, is a very safe way to add treatment to patients. The reality in Germany right now is that we do not have enough rheumatologists to cover all the spaces. We need to roughly double the amount just to give you a picture of what we're talking about. The impact is huge, especially for remote clinics. It's really difficult for patients to get an appointment. We have a window of opportunity of three months to start treatment and waiting times to see a rheumatologist can be nine months and in some case, as long as 12 months. If you wanna start therapy, you wanna see your patients more often to make sure new medication works. These guidelines, these are the guidelines, but we want to, we really want to do that. And there is not enough time to cover all the issues and patients that questions have, questions that patients have. Christine Stamatos of, D, of Huntington, New York, um, said that the concept of nurse-led clinics is not new. What the German study looked at 
and what we do in clinical practice in the United States is the same. There are, in fact, nurse-led clinics in the United States that treat people with rheumatoid arthritis. Many of these clinics in the U.S. and elsewhere, such as Canada and the United Kingdom, do function fairly autonomously. And that's what I was alluding to earlier in the conversation is I think it's different state by state. In California, nurse practitioners have to go through a doctorate program. And on top of that, they have to practice under a specialist. So they cannot have their their own rheumatology clinic, but they can provide care un, with the supervision or with the partnership of a physician. She does mention, though, that in the United States, Kingdom and Canada also, there are a few clinics that do function on their own. I think it's just bringing awareness like we are right now in seeing that the level of care does not change. The level of expertise does not change. The people who are going into these nurse practitioner programs or physician's assistant programs, they may already have expertise or experience in dealing with rheumatology patients as a regular RN, as a registered nurse, and um, may know a lot about the field and treating patients just from being a part of it in the hospital or in the regular clinics and building upon that experience with more clinical hands-on education can definitely bring um, nurses to a point where they can and will provide amazing care for these patients. And I think it could, it says here, this is how I operate my practice. I bring in a physician if there needs to be changes in medication or if patients request a physician's input. In complicated cases such as vasculitis, I always bring in a physician to make sure we are helping patients to get healthy. I think that's the biggest thing is as a nurse practitioner who's dealing with rheumatology patients too, is knowing when you do need a second opinion and you do want to bring in somebody else. And it's also the patient's right to be able to request a second opinion from a physician. Yeah, I thought this was a an amazing article. I will post the article link in the comments on Facebook also so that we can make sure Deanne already did. Thank you, Deanne. Oh, I forgot that I'm sharing my screen already. <laughs> okay, so let's go on to the next article. This is from Versus Arthritis. They are a UK-based organization that has a lot of great resources. If you wanted to look at more of their more of their resources, they have really great ones. And so they're talking about a rheumatology nurse specialist. And I have not heard of this term before, but it, it totally makes sense. So a rheumatology nurse specialist is a trained nurse who has specialist experience and looking after your physical, emotional, and social needs, physical, emotional, and social needs. I wanted to emphasize that. Rheumatology nurse specialists are sometimes called clinical nurse specialists, rheumatology nurse practitioners, or liaison rheumatology nurses. Rheumatology nurse specialists work with people with all kinds of arthritis-related conditions. Some rheumatology nurse specialists are able to diagnose recommend treatments and prescribe medication. So how can I be referred to a rheumatology nurse specialist? People with arthritis are often referred to a rheumatology nurse specialist when a diagnosis has been made by their consultant rheumatologist and their treatment has been agreed. Some rheumatology departments also offer an open system where patients can request to see the rheumatology nurse, nurse specialist independently, usually if there's a problem between appointments. So that's what we've said, that the rheumatologist makes the initial diagnosis and comes helps come up with the treatment plan, and then the rheumatology nurse specialist comes in after that. How can a rheumatology nurse specialist help me? Helping you learn about your condition. A detailed explanation about what your diagnosis means can reduce anxiety and fear you may be feeling. The rheumatology nurse specialist will listen to your concerns and provide information and support during periods of change. They'll explain your symptoms and work with you to reduce their impact. Helping you to learn about drug treatments and monitoring your needs. They'll help you provide with information when you start any drug treatments, making sure that you're uh, fully involved in your treatment. I think um, as a patient 
I forgot to say this in the beginning again, but I am a person living with lupus and Sjogren's. So as a, a young, a person that was diagnosed very young, 12 years old, I was never involved in my treatment or understood any of my treatment until I was 18 years old. So from 12 to 18, I was completely clueless, didn't even know why I was taking Plaquenil or why I had to go to the doctor every three months and get labs done. I was just rushing through it. And when I turned 18, I had to learn everything. I wish that I had a little bit more education and learn more about the drugs and what they even do. I'm a very curious person. So I've Googled and searched all of that on my own, but to have it coming from someone who's treating you from their mouth and then be being able to go through these steps with you is amazing. And I would, I totally would take advantage of that. Okay, let's see. They can offer telephone support and advice line. That would be really awesome if there was a nurse practitioner that was just offering telephone support for any questions that we might have. That's a good idea. And this is a big one that many physicians may not be able to do or may not have the time to do is providing emotional support. The rheumatology nurse specialists can provide expert help and support to improve your mood and discuss how to minimize emotional impact of the condition, both at home and in the workplace. Yeah, this was an amazing article. Also, I will double check to see if Deanne has put that in the chat. Super on it. Thank you, Deanne. I appreciate it. Alrighty, and I have one more article that we will go into. So let's do this. Okay, and this one is how a nurse practitioner can help you manage rheumatoid arthritis. As rheumatologists are in increasingly short supply, nurse practitioners who specialize in rheumatology are becoming integral to treating RA and other AI arthritis diseases. Get the scoop on working with these seasons, seasoned professionals. Okay, um, people with RA have been seen by a rheumatologist or medical doctor with advanced training in diagnosing and treating arthritis and other diseases of the bones and muscles. There's currently a shortage in the United States and is projected to grow in the coming years. There are only 5,500 board certified rheumatologists in this country. And at, let's see, but by the year 2030, we're expecting to be about 3,000 doctors short. Again, this is exactly what I was talking about when coming, when talking about the conversation with my fiance's cousin who's in med school. Many people just don't even take a second look of, at rheumatology as, as a specialty. And that's crazy that they're going to be, they're thinking of being 3,000 doctors short in the next seven years. This shortage is because of the current crop of rheumatologists are getting older and fewer new doctors are opting to specialize in rheumatology. There aren't enough rheumatologists for all the people with arthritis to be seen. Some people have to book an appointment many months out, all of they're expecting, they're experiencing progressive and irre irreversible joint damage. That's a big thing to emphasize. I gla uh, glazed over it earlier about, you know, sometimes it can take three, six, nine, 12 months to get into a rheumatologist. And all in that time, if you have no treatment, your condition is getting worse. It's progressing. There's so much untreated inflammation that it's it can cause an immense amount of damage and pain. And that person has to still live their everyday life with that pain and with that burden. Go to school, go to work, take care of the kids, do all of their chores, all of those things um, while still waiting to be seen for a condition that they may or may not have or that people might have medically gaslighted them about in the past. Yeah, that's just, it's really hard to hear that there's just people suffering out there not being able to get a doctor's appointment. If you think, like if I were to think about not being able to get any of my medication and trying to live my life normally, I don't think I'd be able to. Okay, so here, how do nurse practitioners fit in the picture? Nurse practitioners are being utilized as a part of a multidisciplinary rheumatology team that includes rheumatologists, physicians, assistants to help people managing RA. 
Their integration into rheumatology practice allows for improved access to care, which can lead to improved outcomes for those with RA. A nurse practitioner can diagnose RA, prescribe treatment, and monitor the condition. Nurse practitioners are uniquely situated in and can be easily trained to manage patients with RA. In fact, the study published in June 2020 in the journal Helio Rheumatology found that rheumatology care led by nurse practitioner was shown to be as effective as a standard with rheumatologists for people with RA. They get advanced training beyond their graduate or doctorate degree as a nurse practitioner. When we graduate, nurse practitioners are trained as generalists. An adult rheumatology practitioner and professor um, at the University of Washington, Seattle. Um, from there, a nurse practitioner needs to needs further uh, specialty training. This includes working side by side with a rheumatologist and independent study using resources like the advanced rheumatology course offered by ACR. Um, Nurse practitioners are state nursing licensed and exclusively work as a member of a rheumatologist-led team. Half of the United States allows nurse practitioners to practice with full autonomy, able to evaluate people with RA, order, interpret, and order and interpret diagnostic tests, and prescribe treatments without restriction or oversight by a managing physician, though they work within the rheumatology team. Depending on the practice, the access available is specifically to that team. When people come to see us, we often hear, I really appreciate the time you've taken to explain that to me. Nurse practitioners are trained in rheumatology can be another option for a provider. And in some practices, rheumatologists prefer to make the initial diagnosis themselves before turning over the management of the condition to a nurse practitioner. But in many cases, a nurse practitioner can be the person for diagnosis, management, and treatment. It varies from practice to practice. If a person is not doing well despite changing medication, then probably would see a rheumatologist just in consultation. But because of the collaborative way rheumatology clinics are set up, a nurse practitioner can probably arrange for any care you may need. That's part of the way a rheumatology team functions. You're going to get the best care that you can receive no matter who it is you see. So I hope that taking a look at all of these articles has given us some insight on how the how advanced practice practitioners are able to fill in the gaps, substitute, interchange for rheumatologists, especially after diagnosis and treatment is established. And there are other conversations in terms of billing and how other people see seeing a nurse practitioner versus seeing a physician in terms of the monetary value. I think that's definitely something that should be discussed and that can be discussed. It's very specific to the United States though. So I want to limit a little bit of that conversation since we are an international organization, but it's definitely something that a lot of patients are thinking about. If I'm driving four, five, six, traveling by plane to go see my rheumatologist, why wouldn't I see my rheumatologist or why would I see a nurse practitioner instead of seeing a rheumatologist if I'm paying the same amount, if I'm taking all the effort to go out to these appointments, why would I shift over from seeing the specialist? And it's definitely a big topic that is going to increasingly become more pertinent in our community throughout the next few years and starting to integrate nurse practitioners and physician's assistants into all of these rheumatology clinics and having them take over the more stable patients, I think will really help to lighten the load on the rheumatologists while them still having an eye on their patients and making sure that things are still going well. Alrighty, let's see if we have any additional uh, any additional comments down here in Facebook? Oh, goodness, it's going to play again. Let's see. Facebook, oh, goodness, it's going to play again. Okay, let's see. I wonder if there is a reason that fewer doctors are choosing rheumatology and if an awareness campaign could be possible. Yeah, Becky, I think that that is a topic that is super important. Um, Tiffany, our CEO, and I have talked about ways that we could um, possibly get in there and do some awareness. Um, we've seen in the past that some patient organizations have been able to go into med schools and talk to the med students um, about 
our specific diseases and why getting into the rheumatology field would be important. I also think maybe even hitting the pre-med students like that are in undergrad and letting them know a little bit more about those diseases, maybe even getting people who are their peers to talk about their their peers, to talk about their experience in their disease, to maybe get more people interested in this in in this field one thing that i like to joke around and compare to is the the show house you always see him saying like is it lupus maybe it's lupus there's a joke that he always jokes like if it's lupus but that's the thing is that rheumatology as a field is like putting together a giant puzzle where you have to pick this symptom from here, this sign here, this blood work here, this imaging here, and put it all together to figure out a diagnosis and maybe appealing to people in that way, saying this field is probably really fun. And there's a lot of mystery to put together. I agree. There definitely should be an awareness campaign to bring more rheumatologies in. Rheumatology med students and rheumatologists into the field. Okay, I have our last little bit here is from one of the nurse practitioners that I met at the conference. And so I'm going to read what she had to say. My first question that I asked her was, how or why did you get into rheumatology? And she said, even through my mother's eldest sister, even though my sis- my mother's eldest sister had SLE or lupus, I honestly did not know what rheumatology really was as a practice. A fellow nurse practitioner who worked for an endocrinologist reached out to me when there was an opening with the rheumatologist in his practice. I'd been doing pain management prior and was desperate to get out and find something new. It was probably a good thing that I didn't know what this field consisted of because it may have intimidated me too much to even apply. It was the best thing I have ever done. It was a struggle at first, but I would not have changed a thing. I realized that this is where I belong and will never leave this field. Sorry, I was just checking on my dog. He's making a little bit of weird noises back there. (laughs) And I also asked, what are the main differences between seeing a physician versus a physician's assistant or nurse practitioner? She said, in my opinion, I feel that the main difference between an APP and an MD is the ability to connect to the patient. The rheumatology field is a male-dominated field with the average age of being in their 60s, whereas advanced practice practitioners or APPs is a female dominated field. Most rheumatic conditions affect more women than men. And I feel this is autom- this automatically puts physicians at a disadvantage. These doctors are truly brilliant and have to be at the top of their class to even attempt to secure a fellowship in rheumatology. I think that they are so cerebral sometimes that they forget to listen to the patient. A patient's condition is not the only thing affecting them. Life happens and it affects us all in our mental and physical health. These external forces play a very important role in how treatment is decided and the ability for a patient to remain compliant with a treatment plan. Obviously, some physicians are better at this than others, but I feel that the doctors primarily focus on the patient's illness and not the patient as a whole. For example, I'm not going to choose a treatment that requires blood work or a medication given in office monthly for a patient starting college in a different town or for a new mom or even a single mom, if possible. I know it would be very difficult for me to do that. So I anticipate that it will be difficult for the patient to, for the patient to do it too. There may be a better medication to treat the disease process, but if the patient cannot remain compliant, then does it really matter? And I feel this is where we differ from physicians. We have sometimes more time to spend with the patient. And a lot of us are working moms with little to no help and can sympathize with the patient's struggle. Again, this is a generalization. I think that getting that insight from a nurse practitioner jumps in and solidifies a lot of the things that we have been stating in this chat overall. And I wanted to give her a shout out. I did not give her a very a good amount of time to be able to give us some some good information from her. But this is Rebecca Gerard that was at the Rheumatology Nurses Conference. I apologize if I 
pronounced your last name wrong. I'm going to be sending this to her so that she can see all of the good things that we've discussed in the chat. And also to a few of the other nurse practitioners from the Rheumatology Nurses Society to see if they can jump in and talk to us in our talk show episode that we plan to make out of this topic. So again, I'm going to ask Deanne and Michael to post the Google form that I created for people to be able to add in their comments, questions, concerns, opinions. And we look forward to seeing all of you put in your information. And we may even do a social media campaign with those answers, the more that we get, just so we can continue to educate patients, caregivers, family members about seeing nurse practitioners and physician's assistants. Oh, okay. I'm sure that you are all tired of hearing me talk for almost a whole hour. I'm tired of hearing myself talk. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. I wanted to give a shout out to our mini Go With Us program that Michael and I are doing on for the Rheumatology Nurses Conference, Rheumatology, Rheumatology Nurses Society annual conference. I see Deanne is going to pull up the link for that too, to sign up for, to receive our educational takeaways. We attended about uh, nine to 10 sessions during that conference and are creating about three to seven minute videos, giving the patient's perspective on the educational takeaways that we got from those different sessions and talks. Our first email went out yesterday, but if you sign up all of this week, you'll still gain access to all of those videos and be able to see all the different things that we learned about. I am super excited to um, continue that the, today and make sure that other people are getting more information about all those sessions. Um, our next community chat will be on September 15th. It's going to be at 8 p.m. Eastern time, 7 p.m. Central, and 5 p.m. Pacific. Um, if you go to our aiarthritis.org slash chats webpage, I also have a link there where you can see what time that is in any part of the world so that you can see when to jump in if you are not in the United States. On that page also, you'll be able to find all of the previous community chats and be able to see our plans for the future. Again, that's aiarthritis.org slash chats. I also wanted to say if you are lucky enough to be able to have extra money to donate, we would really appreciate for you to be able to donate to AI Arthritis. We are a nonprofit organization fully run by patients and for patients. And so any donation that you can provide for us would be amazing. I talked a lot about the volunteers in this community chat also. So if you are a patient, if you are a caregiver, if you are a nurse, a retired nurse, if you are a doctor, or you're just someone who has extra time on their hands, please consider volunteering for our organization. We are always looking for people who are willing to give some of their time, who may have additional skills and that we need help with. That would be amazing. If you would love to, to come and volunteer, Michael and Deanne, you can go ahead and drop that information on where they can sign up to be a volunteer. And last but not least, I talked about the talk show quite a bit in this, in this chat also. So if you're interested in seeing all of the other talk shows that we have done, we have over 80 something episodes on a bunch of different topics having to do with the AI arthritis community. So please feel free to check out all of those talk show episodes and yeah, I think that's it. That wraps up this community chat. Thank you. Special shout out to Deanne and Michael for being my right hand people during this chat. I appreciate you both so much. And I think that's a wrap. I hope you all have a great day, night, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And again, this is Layla Lagandon, the health education manager at AI Arthritis, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.